garage provides one Syrian student with a lifeline. Cheap toiletries sold at car boot sales each weekend to make a few pounds. He hasn't received any money from Syria in months, and his university has refused to give him any aid. I talked to some people in the international office at that time. They couldn't give any support, uh, any, any sort of hardship. One of the officers uh, recommended, it's verbally, he recommended me to go to uh, to mosque and ask Imam to give some support. Brunel University has the largest group of Syrian students in the UK, but is accused of failing to provide support to those in need, a charge it denies. The form for the universities is they're being given no clear steer by the government. They are being urged to show the Syrian students support and understanding, but each university is being left to interpret that any way they like. That has meant that some students say they're being treated badly, expelled even, while others are receiving a lot of help. The conflict in Syria has led to the government there failing to pay student fees while sanctions have made it difficult to get money out of the country. It's meant financial problems, not just for some students, but a few UK universities as well. Some universities have large numbers of students. Some of them have 35, 40, 45, up to 50. And there, the ability of the university to respond is slightly different to the situation where the university just has one, for example, one student from Syria. In a cafe at Edinburgh University, this student is grateful for all the support they've given him. He's needed it after, he says, spending 48 days in a detention centre in Syria and posted some anti-regime comments online. I remember lashes with the braided cables on my sole feet, on my back, electronized a stick to make some electricity. I, I, when I looked at my toes and my legs, each one was like the size of the aubergine. The fear for some Syrian students in the UK is that they will suffer a similar fate if financial problems force them to return home. Michael Buchanan, BBC News.